today in order to be with my sister, Chief Joyce Alleluia. Understanding that this is a film that was produced by her uh, and others in which we uh, previewed that at the Nigerian mission several months ago. And now this afternoon in, in the crowd here at St. Lord's uh, School on 143rd Street and in West Harlem, we're seeing it here with over 150 other people being exposed to the where there's we are the endless raw the endless raw that's the name of the film and it's a film about going back to mother nature going back to mother africa and that's what this is about so with all of us coming together doing black history month we are celebrating our blackness, our greatness, and that was get provided to us by the chief. So I say to the chief, assalamu alaikum, thank you chief for allowing everyone else to witness uh, the roar of Mother Africa. <laughs> so the show must go on. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> because we've shown this movie in so many different places that we didn't have any problems. But I am optimistic that you guys will get to watch this movie. And also there are beautiful, wonderful performers that are uh, there to perform for you. We also have our elected officials who are coming to say hello. So we're... <laughs> Um, everybody please look in your wallet, a credit card was found, a credit card was found, and I want to thank the person who found it for being honest enough because you know when you lose that credit card, it's like the whole world. <laughs> So if you are the one who lost the credit card, it's been found, just come to me, identify it, and you will be connected right back to the credit card. And that's our wonderful Miss Emmy Count. Yes, Miss Emmy. <laughs> you guys look great, look at this. Wow, give yourself a huge round of applause. Thank you for coming out. We got a full house. We promise we will not fail you. Oh, in the house we have none other than our assembly man, Al Taylor. He just did a fabulous Black History Month event. Please, assembly man, come say hi to your people. You know they want to hear from you. <laughs>
Let me say this before that thing starts. Am I standing in the wrong place? Listen, I want to talk to you for 30 seconds about the 2020 census. Okay, it is extremely important whether you are a citizen or not, whether you are on the lease or not, if that's where you lay your head, be counted. Every person that does not get counted, we lose $26,000 per person that the government takes out of this community. $26,000. So in your house, count everybody but the cat. So what did I say? Count everybody but the cat. If you don't have a cat, count everybody but the dog. It's important. So there's some information that's going to come to you. They're going to contact you. And you can respond by mail, online, or by phone call. Or you can come to one of the local communities where you trust and share. Your information that you share will not be used with the federal government. New York State is at war with the president. Listen, New York State is at war with the president. Our governor has had a couple of conversations with him. So what, what happens if you travel a lot, there's a card that you can purchase. And that card allows you to go through the uh, TSA without stripping down. New York is not allowed to have that card that gets you through quickly because they don't want us to have it because we won't share information that the federal government needs. So the president is pushing back. But I want you to know, we've been in battles. All of us in this room, we've been through some type of battle. And I want to encourage us to continue to fight the good fight, register the vote, and do all those wonderful things. 2020 census, stand up, be counted. My name is Reverend Al Taylor. I am the assemblyman here. God bless you, and have a great evening. Sister Joyce, thank you so very much. Make some noise if you love New York. Make a whole lot of noise and you come and lose your mind tonight. Thank God there's no alcohol in the house. Well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. So, peace be upon all of you if you don't understand what that means. I'm Robert Jackson. I'm the state senator of this area. But Al Taylor, my colleague, said it all. We are here to make sure that everyone uh, understand that this is... Say it now! Black in the front! Say it now! This is Black History Month. And so that's what we're celebrating all over. But I understand the under, understanding that people need to know you need to be proud of who you are. No matter who you are, whether you're black, white, yellow, green, or blue, whether you're rich or you're poor, you should be proud of who you are. And I'm proud of who I am. And you know what I am? I'm a mixture of everybody. I'm a mixture of everybody. I grew up with a father that's black, I grew up with a father that's Chinese. And people say, wait a minute, you don't look Chinese. I say, what else is new? <laughs> Let's get real, this is 2020, and not, you know, 1850 or, or 1650. If time goes on, there will not be no black, no white, no Latino, no Asian, there will be one individual, one people, that's a mixture of everything. 
And you know one thing, when we understand the diversity of our cultures and our religions, we'll be better off as individuals. So I say that to you, that's why when I come in I greet you with saying hello to you, but also say to you, Assalamu Alaikum. And we may say, why do you say that? I don't know if you're aware, I'm a Muslim, did you know that? Yeah. Well now you do! Yeah. Do I look any different? No! Pretty <laughs> good, But no, seriously, I'm glad there's so many people out here this, this afternoon in order to enjoy Chief Adalui and her uh, forum that she's having this afternoon. And, uh, and many of you know, if you don't know, do you know she's a chief? Did you know that? Well now you do! She's a chief from Nigeria in which her father uh, basically in her town and her village has made her a chief. And so I always give her by her title, Chief Alleluia. Thank you. That's all I like everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so you guys are in, a, you are in for a treat because a lot of elected officials are going to be coming in, stopping by and say hello, because this is Black History Month. Okay? So, ah, I got another friend here. Come on, Dr. Nova, go say hello. Just two seconds. I know, my name is Mike. Yes, I'm so proud to be here, and I'm proud about something else too. We are working on the, what we call it, the 2026 Project, and that is the early black history of New York, going back to 1626, 400th anniversary, 2026. And we are having this program, so we've had for years, Pinkster, and that's the oldest African-American holiday of New York and of the country, May 30th. We want to see you all there at the African Paragraph. And I'm giving one copy to Joyce, and we're working on having a conference at the Schomburg for Pinkster, Juneteenth, and July 5th, the ending of slavery in New York. We gotta talk about the New York black history from the very beginning. And that's it. Okay, thank you. All right, we're ready for the movie. And I have to tell you that Senator Robert Jackson has watched this movie, so it works. We're ready now. Malika, are you ready? Right. Listen, this is amazing, Chief. I am so glad to be here. We are the endless. Roar! I don't want to make too much noise because they're watching a film in the background, but it's amazing lending our voice and reminding us where we come from. And it's a moment in black history where we can be proud. And oftentimes, there are a lot of things that discourage us. Me being an African-American man here in this city, there are a lot of things that discourage us, whether it's bail reform, whether it's incarceration, mass incarceration, and a number of things. Not able to find a job, not able to get past your incarceration. And you bring this piece to us. It's a moment of celebration. It's a moment of uh, I remember seeing the Malcolm X movie and at the end the kids were getting up I am Malcolm I am Malcolm but this reminds us that we come from a great country a great continent and we need to believe in that again and we are that endless roar and I'm happy to play a role in that and anything you're ever doing I'm always there and thank you and I didn't know you had the film credits until just a minute ago so we're going to talk about doing some stuff like that she's an amazing chief and I am so honored to be here because she's the salt of this community and there's a text and this is not preaching it's just for literary purposes it says that a salt once salt loses its purpose what good is it and you are magnificent and thank you for all that you do for each and every one of us even when we're not conscious of it you're reminding us and the dance that you all do I think I had to take some aspirin for that but you remind us of our culture and who we are and we have a right to celebrate and let no one take that from us they've taken everything else but who we are when they look in our faces they see we did not come from this European country. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wow, I just want to say I want to thank you, Assemblyman and Senator, for your support. Let me start by saying, first of all, when I started the New York City Multicultural Festival 11 years ago, I came downstairs, we were carrying all the stuff out of my um, basement, and I came outside, and who do I see? At that time, he was council member. I saw him, I said, council member, what are you doing here? He said, well, I came to help out. I said, what do you mean you came 
to help out. He said, yes, I came to help out. Where are the stuff? He rolled up his sleeve. I said, oh my God, this is so unbelievable. He went downstairs in the basement and started carrying things out just like everybody else. So he taught me what leadership is about. You serve. And right now, ever since the day that I met him before, I'm about to tear. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> we have the other story. But ever since the day that I met him, he's been like a big brother, encouraging me, supporting me, and letting me know that I'm not alone. Oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. So, you know, I'm really grateful to Harlem because you guys have made whatever I do possible. Without your support, it will not be possible. And this, I say, is a gift. It's a gift because I've lived in this country for so long and I wanted to let my people know you're greater than who they say you are. You're greater than who you think you are. There are innate abilities in you that you need to know. I can't tell you, but I can show you. And once you connect with that, let me tell you, we were the first one who were created. That means that we have the ability to do everything and anything and no one can stop us. So once you see that and you connect with your greatness, there's no stopping you. Okay? You African Americans, you are in such a an opportune position to own here on, on in the uh, United States and to own in Africa. You know? And Africa is just waiting for you. Like I said, like we both said, right? Africa is waiting for her children to make her home again. To make her whole again. Because when Africa is whole, let me tell you something. When you and I, we're walking on the street, no one knows if I'm from Nigeria or if I'm from here. They just see black. And when most of them see black, what do they think about? They think about the image that's been portrayed of Africa, which is a continent of poverty, of dirt, of under civilization and whatnot. But that's not true. Yes. So if we work together to showcase the best that Africa has to offer, then we'll get that respect that we're looking for. Because right now, they think that they're greater. Mm. You know, because they're looking, because of the image that they've put out here, that's why I put out this image here, to let us know that we're greater than who they say that we are, greater than who we think that we are, and there's nothing that we cannot do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yes. Put your light on. Sure.
Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. So, show your love. Come on, show your love for these beautiful ladies. Show your love. So ladies and gentlemen, did you like that? Did you enjoy that? This, this has been a fantastic evening. I'm just having such a good time. I'm having a good time. So ladies and gentlemen, our next performer is Chicago Born. She went from a military to a Broadway composer and artist. She's a star of the hit show Bubble and Brown Sugar. She's worked with numerous musical and film legends such as Judy Gray, Woody Allen. Elon Petrie and many, many, many a host of others. She has won numerous awards for her body of work with over 50 years of experience in the industry. And she has blessed the stage and the world with her dynamic style and her soulful presence. So please, ladies and gentlemen, show your love. Please show your love for the one and only Emma Kim. So ladies and gentlemen, here she comes. Please welcome Emma Kerr, the winner of the Emma Kerr. Oh, it's Emmy, Emmy, Emmy. I gotta get some new glasses, I tell you, I'm sorry. I gotta stop buying my glasses and let them be. I gotta get some new glasses. Emmy, Emmy, my name is Gordon. You can mispronounce my name if you like. <laughs> okay. Please, Emmy Kerr, ladies and gentlemen. Emmy! Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please, please give it up for the one and only Emmy Cannon! <laughs> and by the way, she's 85 years old. Right. 85. God bless her. God bless her. You're gonna bitch out. I'm gonna take my age. Keep it in. I'm gonna stay in the secret. So, what we're setting up for our next act, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give a special thanks to all of our vendors who came out and showed the love and showed the support. I'm gonna also pay tribute to our distinguished guests and our supporters for this lovely event, which I'm proud to be hosting. This next group was founded in 1994 by Anthony F. Wooden Sr. And the company is comprised of many talented children, teens, and adults. This is a multi-talented performance troupe whose philosophies incorporates family, unity, peace, love, and respect for all mankind. The Wakandi African American Theater Company has become a popular main attraction for many cultural and educational events because of the educational and multicultural teachings encompassed in the company performance. The demand for Bokande has been enormous. And we are so proud to have them on the stage with us. They perform throughout the United States and they are well, well known for their energy and their spirit and their power. So ladies and gentlemen, if you please, show your love for the Bokande! 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 Renaissance. And I said to myself, the Harlem Renaissance. 
Yes. It's truly important that I pay homage to those whose shoulders I stand upon. Truly important. Please, again, pay homage to Baba Tunde Olatunji. The drums. Help me out. You're going to say it with me. The drums.
comes from the late great Lerac Bay.
our presentation as we give thanks and praises to the Creator and the ancestors. Our chair? Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister George.
They go out with me to all the political things because I want them to know and see. You know, to be engaged, to know what's happening. Get out of that bubble. You know? So they're involved with me in the community work that I do because I tell them, you need to serve the community where you live. You have to. You have to make it a better place. You can't wait for somebody else. And you have to do it because you want to do it, not because what you think you're going to get, because ain't nobody going to thank you for it, they're going to you for it. You know? But you do it anyway. Because of God. Because we need to make this place a better place. Some people say, oh, the world is so terrible. I say, no, God created a beautiful world. We can be pissed on it. Okay? So let's not piss on it. Let's make it a better place. So they're future leaders. They're involved in everything that I do some hands-on training because I tell them, I'm not going to do this forever. I have to pass it on to some people. And I can't wait until I'm old. I can't move no more <laughs> to start training somebody. I train you now while we can still hustle together. I can still show you things, take you places. I'll tell you now, so that when the time comes and I can't go nowhere, I know you got this. And then you have a job forever. Instead of going out there and looking for a job that they don't want to give you, that doesn't lead anywhere, that doesn't do anything for you. Like you hear a lot of people say, it's just a job, right? I want to give you more than something that's just a job. I want to give you a life. So, Future Leaders is one of the programs that we do. And all the stuff that you see here being done, they're the ones who do it. I'm the mic guys, of course. But I really have to thank them because without them, I wouldn't do all this. I'll just be doing one little small thing for myself. By myself. <laughs> You know, I told them, I said, you know, I started the New York City, I started this company by myself and Gloria, Gloria back there, she's our board chair. And, you know, I know it was this nights and I had trying to put the festivals together, the concert and everything, doing the flyers, promoting, going out there to distribute the flyers, getting the performers to perform. Doing the program, oh my god, yeah, I did all of that for several years. But now, they're helping me, because I am getting old. <laughs> so, I'm getting better, right? I'm not getting old, I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm getting wiser. <laughs> so, um, they're going to come out now, we're going to sing some songs for you guys. We're going to take you back to Nigeria. We're going to take you back to Africa again. Um, you saw the movie. And we're going to take you back again. Although everybody here that you saw before us took you back. You listened to the fabulous playing and singing of a great musician, Emmy Kemp. She is a legend in our community. So it's always a pleasure to have her in our performance, in our concerts. You also heard Batala Amin, come on, you know, all women, uh, drum corps, fantastic. That's all African beat. And of course, Bata, um, Bokande. Bokande, let's give all of them a huge And we're going to sing just a few songs for you before we close down. And we are also grateful to this uh, Our Lady of Lords for always giving us the opportunity to come here. And we hope that the relationship that we now have to be started right in Our Lady of Lords. So this is our family, it's our home. 
and we pray that the relationship that we have with you all will continue. Thank you, Hector. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Gordon, I got my musician there. Chia is my associate music director. Baba is easy. Um, so as we test the mic, I'm going to ask him to say hello. Emmanuel, test the mic, say hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Anthony, he's a leader of Bokan Day. Olufolake, she calls it Sarah Rachel. She has a good name. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and my sister Tyro. Tyro means that she is half of a twin. <laughs> and she's the first one yeah. that came out. <laughs> Hello, everyone.
They said, God created the water. Water can push away a tree. It can carry a tree, but it has no arms. Water can carry the biggest human being, but it has no legs. Water can carry away my problems.
was doing this movie called Slave Warrior, and it was telling the story of, from our perspective, what we saw, what happened to us, how we perceived the whole thing of slavery. For instance, in my village in Nigeria, there's a cave where my people hid when the kidnappers were coming. But they had dogs, and they only found them because the dogs refused to go inside the cave. So I wrote the song with what I have in my heart, and find my brethren. So everywhere I'm going, I'm looking, and every, every black person I see, I say, this is my cousin, this is my cousin, this is my cousin. So I wrote the song, Cry for the Land. Something terrible has happened. Find my brother, because I am lost.
life has been so good to us, and I forget our mother. When you honor your mother, your mother honors you too. When you pray for your mother, your mother prays for you too. So even though we're here, we remember Africa. And we're going to sing, Kosisike Lady Africa, uh, which means God bless Africa. May her prayers, may our rock prayers rise up to heaven, and may God bless us all. Let the 
I see. So how do you enjoy the show tonight? I love it. I love Joyce Adewami. I love the music. I love the fact that she really understands art for the community. Definitely. And it's, Definitely. you know, it's free. It's open to the public. It's something that people love. Okay. That, that, that's what's up. That's what's up. And how you enjoy the movie? I know you didn't get to see the movie. I saw it before. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I've seen it a couple of times. Uh, that movie is very heartfelt. It is. Yeah, it's very for the children and everybody. The children need to see that as well. It's fantastic. Uh, and I'm glad to get to talk to you because they said so beautiful things about you. Well, Joyce is amazing. She's like everywhere, community board, leader, music. She's an incredible woman. That's, that's, that's what I need okay. to hear. All On right. the count of three, we got to say believe in yourself, all right? Right. Okay, one, two, three. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. All right. All right. Good thing. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're Thank welcome. You nice to see you. Thank you very much.